Hello, Magic players. This is Jumbo Commander, and I do not have a Commander deck tech, nor a top 10 list, or anything Commander related, because it's the holiday season, and that means that the Vintage Cube on Magic Online is available. Oh, I'm so excited. So I wanna talk a little bit of Cube today. So, it's December 2016, and I want to cover what changes were made to the Vintage Cube, and whether those were good changes or bad changes. Let's discuss. Alright, first up, we have Secure the Wastes. And it's out! Ugh. And it's replaced with Recruiter of the Guard. Now, I like Recruiter of the Guard. I don't want to try to sell you that Recruiter of the Guard is bad, but I want to try and convince you that Secure the Wastes is good. Uh, so, let's go through it. First off, when I imagine white decks, uh, one strategy I imagine is the low to the ground. You know, you put out a lot of guys uh, and you attack and then you pump your team with like a Spear of Heliod or Honor the Pure, a Hero of Bladehold. And Secure the Wastes kind of is a finisher in that kind of deck. You know, you tap five or six mana and then suddenly, boom, you have like your army back again. Now, it's not ideal in that strategy, uh, but I do think it is ideal in a more controlling strategy where you know, maybe Esper Control or White Blue Control, where you gain a huge mana advantage, and then at the end of someone's turn, you Sphinx's Revelation. <laughs> no, just kidding. You secure the Waste, and then hopefully that can be one of your win conditions. Uh, it operated like that in Standard a little bit, and so I think it was really fun and pretty powerful. I also thought it was good in those control decks versus Planeswalkers. I mean, maybe you didn't want to like blow your counterspell on a planeswalker so instead you secure the waste at the end of turn and then you have attackers against a planeswalker uh, so i really liked the flexibility of this card and i'm really sad to see it go but that doesn't mean that recruiter of the guard is bad i really like recruiter of the guard uh, it's very flexible about being able to search up your creatures but we do have to be very critical about what creatures it can get because three mana for a 1-1 one, one draw random small dude is just fine. A 1-1 one, one is not really worth a card, so it's hard for me to, to wrap my head around this. Unless I'm getting a very critical card. I'm thinking Pestermite. I'm thinking like Geist of St. Traft. I'm thinking a lot of different cards like Hermit Druid. I don't know. Uh, all of these cool cards. So you need to be able to look at your deck and figure out if Recruiter of the Guard can fit uh, because this 1-1 one, one body is just not cutting it. Next up, Isumaru! The Doge is out! Oh, this is starting off bad, folks. Oh, this is starting off bad and replaced with, ooh, Selfless Spirit. I recently added Selfless Spirit to my cube and I think it's excellent. But why are you cutting the puppy dog for it? Okay. I honestly think that in order to make an aggro deck work, you need to have a critical mass of one drops. And cutting Isumaru is not the right choice to support uh, mono white aggro or low to the ground white aggro. But having Selfless Spirit is the right decision. It helps protect you against board wipes. It has evasion. It comes down early. I think Selfless Spirit belongs in this cube. You should try it out and play it if you're playing uh, Mono White. Just give you some sort of resilience. But what could we do to keep Isimaru in this cube? So, so far I've been really excited about the additions of, say, Selfless Spirit, but just sad about the cards that were cut. So maybe there's a few cards in the cube that could be cut for Selfless Spirit instead of our lovable dog. How about Hollowed Spirit Keeper? Now, this is very important because I'm going to be talking about a strategy or a piece of a strategy that's very important for white to function. And that's the ability to recover from disruption. Hollowed Spirit Keeper, one white white, basically says when it dies, you get spirits back onto the battlefield. That's important for white. If they're disrupted, boom, you're right back in the game with some spirits. And Selfless Spirit 
does something very similar. It prevents disruption by giving your team indestructible. I do think that Selfless Spirit performs this task better. It's one in a white, it comes down early, it has evasion, so it does double duty. It does beat down and it does protection. I like Hallowed Spirit Keeper right here in front of us, but it's harder to cast, one white, white, it's on the ground, it's a little bit slower, and white wants to be attacking. How about another option? Mirror and Crusader, another three drop that's a little bit awkward to cast. Now Mirror and Crusader is a very powerful if you have him equipped, super duper powerful, sometimes unbeatable if it's facing black or green, but the top end and the bottom end are so far apart, uh, sometimes these uh, color-hating cards uh, leave a bad taste in players' mouths. Um, Mirren Crusader can be spectacular or just fine. Uh, I found this card underwhelming and not that fun to play, so he's been cut from my cube. I think that this 3-drop slot is very, very competitive, and we might need to be a little bit more selective about what we have in our curve in our white decks. Kozilek the Great Distortion is out! And I think we're all fine with this. I mean, I never really drafted Kozilek, and I saw him get passed around really, really late in these drafts. Uh, I think he was a little bit of a flop. Uh, mostly because well, we want our fatties to have Annihilator. We want them to be artifacts so we can tinker them into play. We want them to take control of our opponent's turn. Emmercool, the promised end is in and he, she, sorry, sorry, she, she belongs here. It's so much fun to take control of your opponent's turn and these are the big, fun, splashy effects that we need. I know it doesn't have Annihilator, uh, but it's still really great. I also know it's not indestructible, but still so much fun. Great and fun. Emmercool, please stay in my cube for a long, long time. Whisperwood Elemental <laughs> is out. And replaced with Vergerous Gear Hulk. All right, I like this change. Vergerous Gear Hulk is very strong. Uh, just a big, dumb beater. But also in cube, remember, Green strategy has a lot of mana dorks ramping out big creatures, and Verger's Gear Hulk can make these mana dorks relevant again with these plus one plus one counters. Whisperwood Elemental is not a huge loss. I did like the army that it created, and I liked the protection that it gave, but it was a very slow mid range card uh, that just gave you a lot of value. Uh, maybe green does need some value. I don't know. Let's explore some other cards that are in the cube that maybe could fit and let Whisperwood Elemental stay. Let's start off with Wolfier Silverheart. It's a very close card to Verger's Gear Hulk. And if you want this aggressive green deck that can just bash someone in the face, then Wolfier Silverheart and Verger's Gear Hulk really do belong. But I think the Gear Hulk is a little bit more flexible than this wolf dude. Uh, I've taken Wolfier Silverheart out of my cube. I found him underwhelming. He's very strong, he can do a lot of damage, but green is about going bigger than five drops. That's what I found. Uh, Birthing Pod, I have a little bit of a gripe with. I love it so much. I loved it when I could play it in Modern. It was, it's fantastic in my Commander decks. I can't get it to work in Cube. It's just underwhelming. It's so difficult to build a deck around Birthing Pod, these birthing packages, that I always found found it to be dissatisfying. So I've cut it, it's gone from my cube. I wanna see if you guys like Birthing Pod in your cube decks, in your cube decks. Of course you like it in your ADH decks, in your cube decks. Outpost Siege is Outpost. That's bad. Uh, and in is Chandra Torch of Defiance another great switch. Chandra Torch of Defiance is very powerful. I like her in burn, I like her in mid-range. I think she's great controlling. I, wonderful form of card advantage and control. Outpost Siege was interesting, but definitely not as impactful as this Planeswalker. Uh, this does mean that this cube has three iterations of Chandra included. 
Uh, that's almost as that's almost as many copies as Jace as I think they have. Let's see, Mind Sculptor, Baby Jace, Jace. Oh, no, there's four Jaces, two Mana Jace, three Mana Jace, and two four Mana Jaces. I think so. Okay, Jace is still top dog. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, but Chandra might be catching up. Ooh, I changed the background art. What do we got here? Miloku, the Clouded Mirror is only good with Fast Bond. Uh, Fast Bond is in the cube still, but Miloku's always underwhelmed me. I don't like her very much. Uh, so she's out and Torrential Gear Hulk. Now, blue is a tremendously difficult color to draft around to create uh, because there's so many pieces that need to be there. I am wondering about Torrential Gear Hulk and whether this one for one switch is smart uh, because blue has so many demands on it. I think this is a much more complicated conversation for later on, but I'm excited to play with the Gear Hulk. I think he's really cool. Staff of Domination is replaced with Smuggler's Copter. Now this is interesting too, because this is not a one for one trade. I mean, you're looking at artifacts here, but you're looking at a control finisher, like a combo finisher, sorry, and an awesome aggro card. Now, I think Smuggler's Copter belongs in cube. It goes with uh, mono white aggro, uh, red aggro. You can even use it in some mid range strategies. I think it's wonderful and very flexible. And actually, that's the reason why it belongs, it's flexibility. Staff of Domination is very inflexible. It's only truly powerful when you have a metal worker producing a bajillion mana or Ralphalos doing tons of mana as well and shenanigans. Staff of Domination is a player in shenanigans. Smuggler's Copter is gonna be critical in a lot of aggro strategies. Good switch. Air Falconroth. Yeah, I don't know why this vampire was in here. I mean, having a discard outlet was kind of cool, uh, but black isn't aggro anymore, and I got rid of my black aggro too. So replacing it with Magus of the Will, a controlling Yagmoth's Will creature, yes. This is what I want. I have not had a chance to try out Magus of the Will in my cube, but anything that even slightly supports Storm needs to be there because Storm needs all the help it can get. It's so weak, but awesome. We need to help out Storm somehow. Uh, but Air Falconroth did not have a place. There, there just wasn't a black aggro strategy, and this is a great change. All right, Nizumi Shortfang wasn't very good. It's out, and it's replaced with Collective Brutality. I'm very intrigued by this card because I'm on the fence. I don't know if it's good enough, but it's so flexible. I can't break away. I can't take my eyes off it. Let's break it down. So one in a black, you can pick one. And for every card you discard, you can pick another beyond the first. So let's see what you get for one in a black. You can have an opponent discard an instant or sorcery. Okay. It's an expensive duress. Oh, but... Duress hits more than instants and sorceries, and doing this on two man instead of one does cause a lot of tempo loss. Okay, I'm not sold by that ability. Let's go to the next one. Target creature gets minus two, minus two. That can be relevant, and although I would rather pay one mana like a disfigure for that, uh, it's okay. Oh, but this is sorcery speed. I, I would really want to pay one mana at instant speed. Uh, I'm underwhelmed by that ability as well. A last one, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Again, that's not an effect I care about. It could be really nice to finish out a game, maybe? I don't know, but I don't care if that's on my card. I'm underwhelmed at all levels of collective brutality, but maybe, just maybe, with all of them together and a discard outlet for maybe Reanimator built into a card, it might make it. Please tell me what you think of Collective Brutality. Pick it, play it, tell me it's good, tell me it's horrible. I need to know. Nizumi Grave Robber has joined his rat rogue brother and is out of the cube, only to be replaced with Phyrexian Arena? Wait, this wasn't already in the cube? I love Phyrexian Arena. It's reliable card draw. It fulfills the black strategy of basically being really flexible and being sort of a support color. 
I think this is a great inclusion. Uh, great, good, awesome. Uh, one thing I have to think in the back of my head is, you know, Coercive Portal. You know, Coercive Portal is another sort of card draw that has been recently included in the cube. And I think that's a great card too. Uh, you might want to think of how many of these draw card every turn cards you need in the cube, but I will for sure try Phyrexian Arena. I think it's wonderful. Good job, Wizards. Thank you all for watching. This has been Jumbo Commander, Jumbo Cube Commander. I'm not doing Commander today. I did some cube action. I love Vintage Cube. I'm going to play it like crazy. If I can, I'm a little bit busy, but I'm going to play it for sure, at least a little bit. Uh, and I want to thank you so much for listening to something new. Uh, if you like this content, please comment and let me know. Uh, I'll talk about more Cube if you guys like it, because this is another one of my passions. Uh, and hopefully uh, I can maybe get more subscribers. Okay, maybe, maybe you're a new person and you want to subscribe. That'd be great too. All right, guys, uh, I'll be back with more Commander content and maybe a little bit more Cube content. I'll talk to you later. Bye.